Okay, boys and girls, here we are. Calamity's end. We all waited so long for this, so let's jump into this chapter. Like always, there will be a summary for chapter 107, then a summary for chapter 108, and finally a quick analysis. So let's go. The chapter starts at a hospital where Yosuke is in holy room. He is still wounded, but he goes on. Meanwhile, at the Higashikata house, Poro calls Faro in the garage and Kato starts a meme speech about potatoes. Kato is still crying, but Yashua warns her not to approach Toru and explains the situation to her. Then Daya and Hato appears, but Kato warns them not to come over to the garage. During the exchange, Toru picks up a saw and threats in Kato with a bad villain speech, and she manifests amazing stand, space trucking. She explains that a stand can hide things in a space between a card and another card. They are not destroyed, but hidden. Because of that, wonder if you can't attack her since she had Toru's arm to immobilize him. She did not attack him. Kato also clarifies that she knows everything about the Rokakaka fruit. We get a flashback where Jobin explains her the whole plot about the Rokakaka fruit and how everything comes together. Afterwards, Kato uses her card to partly hide the Rokakaka plant because the fruit can break the curse of the Higashikata family. In the present, Kato delivers through the space truck in Tsurugi right into Toru and they begin the equivalent exchange. We are back in a ruined Higashikata house. The equivalent exchange continues as the surviving members of the Higashikata family and Yashua observe the situation. Dust flows from Kato's stand cards and she explains that the Rukakaka fruit has been destroyed. Toru goes berserk and attacks Kato with wonder of you. However, the stand begins to disintegrate as Toru also disperses because of the curse. He is more than angry and declares that there will never be another fruit like this one. He tries to manipulate Yashiro, but no one listens to the idiot. He dissolves into dust, but Tsurugi comes to consciousness, all healed. As he dissolves, Toru sees a hornet and then completely disintegrates into dust. Calamity caught Kato and the soul Toru was holding before struck her in the stomach. She falls to the ground and dies. Rest in peace, you brilliant character. The narrator of the story now comes back to the spotlight and explains that Narisuke, Kato and Jobin are all dead. Trash Boy probably survived, wounded, as well as the other members. The house is apparently completely destroyed as well as the plant. At least the curse is broken. Araki, however, has struck again with more writing. Norisuku's body is lying next to the place where Toru dissolved. Yashu notices the head doctor who is crawling under a car and entering Norisuku's body. He's taken over and the love of calamity continues. Fortunately, Yosuke is back and he actually looks pretty uninjured. With soft and wet beyond, he aura aura the head doctor into the next universe. The chapter ends with Yashu leaning on Yosuke. So beautiful. This chapter has closed so many unanswered questions. The facing was strange nonetheless, especially the ending with the head doctor. How the heck did Yosuke get to the house so fast and then relatively unharmed? And just now he could control the stand in such a good way? I'm not complaining, the chapter was pretty exciting, but the ending was nevertheless very strange in terms of pacing. Anyway, the story of the Jolion is that a curse must be broken. This was already said in the first chapters and this theme ran throughout the whole series. This is how transition between part 7 and part 8 became possible in the first place. Johnny has returned to New York and then back to Japan to save Rina. Just like Yosuke, he was looking for a cure to save a loved one and was willing to sacrifice himself. The parallels are just great. One could even go farther and beyond. Even part 6 was about the Joestar curse finally being broken. In a new universe, Dio and all his consequences are no longer there. The Joestar family is finally free of this curse. So what do I really want to say? Araki has really managed to put a journalistic bracket on it, just like in a reportage, or a good criminal story. This man has really great writing skills and this he has proved for over a decade. And now for the dead people. Unless the next chapter says it otherwise, we really have a lot of dead characters in Jujorian. K, Mamazuku, Jobin, Arisuke and Kato are all dead in just one arc. Jobin's death in particular I would have imagined to be my epic. I think we all thought he would survive or that he would become an even more important villain. At least Kato got a redemption arc and my god was she cool with it. She completely kicked Taro's ass in just two chapters. Plus, seeing Toru whine like that in particular was refreshing. I'm really curious how Raki will do the next chapter and if this one will be the epilogue. 
Next chapter could be the last one. Many Japanese blog reports that in the next issue we will have our last Jojolian chapter. It would make sense. The star is the big and final villain, a curse is now finally broken. But what do you think about this news? Let's talk about it in the comments and thank you for watching.